In the realm of mixed martial arts, MMA, a unique and unexpected group of fighters has emerged, sumo wrestlers. Traditionally associated with Japan's ancient sport of grappling, these sumo fighters have stepped into the octagon, bringing their massive size and strength with them. While they may seem out of place in MMA, their forays into the sport have left an indelible mark. Let's explore the journey of sumo wrestlers who ventured into the world of MMA and how their traditional background influenced their performance. The first notable sumo wrestler to cross into MMA was Emmanuel Yarbrough, a massive figure standing at 6 feet 8 inches and weighing over 882 pounds. Yarbrough was an athlete like no other. Born in Richmond, Virginia, Yarbrough initially built his career in sumo wrestling, even becoming an amateur sumo world champion. He was not only a sumo wrestler, but also dabbled in judo and various other martial arts. However, Yarbrough's size set him apart from any competition. He holds the Guinness World Record as the heaviest professional athlete in history, a title that is hard to imagine anyone surpassing. Yarbrough made his MMA debut in the early days of the UFC, participating in UFC 3. As the first sumo representative in the organization, he faced Keith Hackney, a practitioner of Kempo Kung Fu. Despite their size difference, Hackney was a much smaller man. The fight didn't go in Yarbrough's favor. One, that was the last team And then we'll get hit. He's down. He won. That was the last team And then we'll get hit. Hackney used his speed and agility to deliver powerful strikes, ultimately knocking the larger Yarbrough down with a palm strike. Although Yarbrough briefly turned the fight around by throwing Hackney out of the octagon. And through the other gate. Hackney recovered and finished the fight with a knockout punch. Don't Man, hurt him. Finally got the leg. Don't hurt him. Yarbrough's UFC debut ended in defeat, but it was a historic moment as it showcased the clash between sumo and MMA. After his UFC stint, Yarbrough continued fighting, participating in two more MMA bouts. His next fight was against Tatsuo Nakano, where his immense size proved to be an advantage. Yarbrough cornered Nakano and used his weight to dominate. Eventually winning the fight via submission. This victory marked his only win in MMA. However, in his subsequent fight against Daiju Takase, Yarbrough's size worked against him. Takase, a much smaller and more agile fighter, danced around Yarbrough, evading his attacks. Eventually, as Yarbrough tired, the referee stopped the match, giving Takase the win by knockout. Yarbrough's MMA career was short-lived, but it highlighted the challenges of transitioning from sumo to a more versatile combat sport. Next, we have Takafumi Sato, who fought under the name Tsuyoshi Kamiya after his retirement from professional sumo wrestling. His sumo career came to an abrupt halt due to forced retirement by the Japan Sumo Association, but Kamiya quickly found a new avenue in MMA. His transition to the sport was impressive. In his debut fight, Kamiya faced Dylan James and dominated from the start. Kamiya landed a punch that broke James's nose, forcing the ringside doctor to stop the fight within just three minutes.
the injury was severe enough to halt the match, giving Kamiya a victory by Dr. Stoppage. Kamiya continued his MMA journey with more notable victories. One of his most significant wins came against Kazu Miyamoto, a fight that ended in a spectacular fashion. Kamiya knocked out Miyamoto in just eight seconds with a devastating right hook, leaving fans and commentators stunned. The referee was forced to step in before Kamiya could inflict further damage with hammer fists, solidifying Kamiya's place as a dangerous opponent in the ring. His success in MMA contrasted with the more sluggish performances of other sumo wrestlers, as Kamiya's relatively lighter frame allowed him to move more fluidly and effectively in the cage. Another intriguing sumo to MMA fighter is Takanofuji Satoshi. This wrestler, hailing from Honu Island in Japan, began his professional sumo career at just 15 years old. He quickly made a name for himself, climbing the ranks to become a feared opponent in the sumo ring. However, after failing a drug test in 2021, Satoshi was dismissed from the sumo world, prompting him to make the switch to MMA. Unlike his fellow sumo wrestlers, Satoshi's MMA career hasn't been as successful, boasting only one win out of four fights. His single victory came when he capitalized on his opponent, Cody Jerbeck's fatigue. Satoshi finished the fight with a well-placed head kick, followed by a barrage of punches, securing a TKO win. Despite his less impressive MMA record, Satoshi's journey into the sport underscores the difficult transition from sumo to a more dynamic combat environment. One of the most famous sumo wrestlers to transition to MMA is Akabono, a sumo legend from Hawaii. Born on May 8, 1969, Akabono moved to Japan in 1986 to pursue his sumo career. Within two years, he made his professional debut and quickly rose through the ranks, achieving the prestigious title of Yokozuna, the highest rank in sumo. Akebono's dominance in the sport was evident as he won 11 titles throughout his sumo career. However, after retiring from sumo in 2003, Akebono decided to transition to kickboxing and later MMA. Akebono made his kickboxing debut at K1 Premium 2003 against heavyweight fighter Bob Sapp. Despite outweighing Sapp by over 150 pounds, Akabono struggled with his stamina, a common issue for larger fighters. <laughs> Sap ultimately knocked out Akabono with a series of punches. <laughs> Unfortunately, Akabono's kickboxing career didn't fare much better as he only managed to secure one victory out of 10 matches. His lone win came in the K1 World Grand Prix 2005 against Naoya Kakuda, but it was clear that Akebono's size was more of a hindrance than an advantage in these matches. Akebono also ventured into MMA, where he faced some of the sport's top fighters. One of his most memorable fights was against Royce Gracie, a Brazilian jiu-jitsu legend. The matchup was an exciting contrast in styles, with Gracie representing the technical grappling discipline of jiu-jitsu and Akabono relying on his size and sumo background. However, Gracie's technique prevailed as he quickly locked Akabono into an armbar, forcing the sumo wrestler to tap out. <laughs> In conclusion, 
Sumo wrestlers entering the world of MMA have created some of the most memorable moments in combat sports history. Fighters like Emmanuel Yarbrough, Tsuyoshi Kamiya, Takano Fuji Satoshi, and Akabono brought their unique size, strength, and sumo background to the octagon, often facing significant challenges. While some, like Kamiya, found success, others struggled with the demands of the sport. Nevertheless, their presence in MMA highlights the diversity of martial arts and the ongoing evolution of fighters in the sport.